So here we go. We got another project here that's going to be delaying my uh, GGBO build this year. Neighbor has uh, presented me with uh, his Les Paul Jr. From what I can see, it's a 2011 uh, custom shop model and uh, needs a little bit of love. So we're going to see what we can do for him and uh, get it back to uh, playable condition. Um, frets obviously from age you're gonna need some cleaning, gonna need restraining. The whole guitar needs some some love cleaning wise. It's been dormant for a while, <clears throat> and uh, the main issue we have here is the bridge is pulling out. So we're gonna do a tear down. And we're gonna uh, assess the situation and see what we can do. But overall. This is in really decent shape. <clears throat> uh, let's see. You can see it's got the standard TV yellow finish. It's had some some obvious wear and usage. A few nicks and things here and there to give it some character. As far as I can tell, it's all original and. It's got all its stickers and the serial numbers seem to be valid. So, let's get to tearing this down and see if we can help a brother out. Time to start the cleaning. General dust off it real quick. Oh yeah, you can see that's really pulled forward there. I'm not sure if it's going to be a matter of just a press fit or what, but I want to. I'm going to take the pickup out and see what wood's underneath and, and uh, know exactly what we're working with. Amazing how quick that mother brings brings it right up. Very light pressure, so I'm not overheating the fret, keeping it moving, so there's no heat buildup. And they really come to life.
is the uh, okay. Get the neck all polished. Got everything rearranged for the sun here, and we're starting on polishing the uh, the tailpiece. Okay, nice and nice and pretty. Polish on there, on there. Nice the bottom. Here. Get up the sun. Oh yeah, onwards and upwards. He thinks the wheels come. Oh yeah. Oh, time for a new wheel. Time for a new wheel. The center is actually drilled itself out. Nothing to grip. <laughs> I wonder why it wasn't polishing up good. All right, let's pause this and go get another one. Okay, got all the frets polished. I uh, scraped the the fretboard down. Got all the little ruts and, and speckles of paint and all that stuff off. Got the tailpiece all polished up. Got that cleaned and ready to go. And uh, prepped the fretboard for with a cleaner. And now it's time to see the magic happen. We'll put some oil on there. It should soak in nice on this nice warm day. Soak in. This one wasn't in too bad shape. It was just nasty and grimy. So it's been pretty much kept in a nice environment for most of its life, it seems. Every neck comes to life with a nice boiling. Let's all the pretty out. Okay, second coat of oil is on. Now it's time to move on to uh, pulling this pick pickup cover off or this pickup out and seeing what's underneath to do the repair. On the bridge. I'm gonna pull this out, see what kind of wood is underneath before I pull it out. I, I pulled on a stud and that actually started coming up. So I figure why the oil is soaking into the neck. We'll do that. And uh, I'll buff that neck out and we'll move on. So far, everything I've seen that the, uh, says this is actually a real, real Epiphone and all original so far so it's always nice having a unit like this to work on and there we go look at that <laughs> shielding paint 
An original Gibson logo. Wow. Let me put my granny glasses on. Put on there. Let's see exactly what that says. Yep. And so this is definitely, definitely an official, official junior. So crack on with the repair. It looks like it's solid. No funkiness in the body. So. and dust and junk out of this while we're here. We'll assume the grounding wire went to this one because I don't see any wire in here to come over to here. So we'll assume the bridge is grounded on that one, which is a good thing. Alrighty. We are happy, happy, happy. Now a little trick with working with any kind of screws. So you'll never strip one out. Get it started and hold, turn it backwards, and you'll feel it click as it falls down into the first thread. There we go. There we go. There's the hole. Okay. There's the click. And if you do that on every kind of screw, it doesn't matter if it's a machine screw, if it's a wood screw, you, you turn it back until you feel that click, you will never, ever, ever strip threads. And you can actually hear it in some, some materials. Quick tip of the day. Here it seems the pick guards just holding it up back. Or pick up pick up ring, sorry. That's all you need is, is two fingers so you don't strip anything out. All right. I'm going to finish buffing up these screws and then we'll get on to getting on. Pull that out. Oh, yeah, I forgot to show you earlier. Remember when I wore the center out of this? I found that I don't have any more of these buffing pads. So basically what I did is I filled the hole with hot glue, put it back in the exact center, and there was enough of a ridge in the back to keep it aligned so it was all all balanced back where it was. Quick fix, and we're back on to functional again. Just have to remember to put those on my list for next time I go to Wally World. That's about where that was. Actually, so I'm not wasting time and doing simple stuff. Show you what's going on here. Buff that off in a minute. As you can see, that came out of there super, super easy. So it looks like all the grippy stuff is fine. It just looks like they they drilled the hole too deep, so the bottom is, is pushing in. So, I think, yeah, you can see, you can see in there where it's, it's actually cocking over and, and this part is digging into the wood. I think if I measure the depth and cut a, 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 a piece of dowel off and put it down there where this is sitting down flush on that, give it a, st a stable base on her knee it won't won't have that ability to push over so we'll try to fix it that way and then obviously a little bit of wood glow in there will help help solidify the uh 
the worn out slots, excuse me, the worn out slots that are in there. And we should be back to, uh, to golden. Okay, as we can see, the sun is pretty much heading down below the trees. My stupid camera overheated, so we missed part of the stuff to do that we did. But, anyway, here's where we sit. Just put the last coat of oil on the, the fretboard. Letting that soak in. And uh, we did the repair. And what I ended up doing was I measured with the calipers how deep how deep the hole was and then the length of the, the stud there or the insert and it was nearly four millimeters deeper so that gave a whole lot of room at the bottom to, to flop around so what I did was I cut off four millimeters here and then uh, dropped it down the hole and sanded it until the insert fit all the way down at the bottom and once it did that, I pulled the, the wood out, dropped some wood glue down there, dropped the, the wood piece down in there, pushed that down. And then I coated the, the, uh, the fingers around that insert with glue, pressed that down flush, and then used the bridge to align the Align the fit and the, and the stri and straightness. So nice and loose, moves around. You can put it on and off. So I'm going to call that repair done. It sits flush down with the the body like the other one does. It's nice and straight. <clears throat> so as they say, it's all over but the drying. The only thing left to do now is uh, I'm going to take the uh, machine heads off, clean up the the headstock and I'm going to polish them. I don't want to polish them while they're on the uh, the headstock back there for for the labels and, and, and markings back there. I don't want to damage those. So we'll do that off the guitar. Make them nice and shiny like everything else. And then they're going to restring it. Oh yeah, one other thing is I got the, I got better felts for underneath the, the strap things here. Those are pretty much shot this one is just sitting there spinning. But, yep. So it's, it's, it's got some character. It's got some some deep scratches, some dings, like I showed earlier. But uh, I want to hear what this thing sounds like plugged up on a on a real amp instead of just a little practice amp. Going to be interesting. Anyway, there is that. That is done and done for the day. Now that everything's cooling off. I'm going to clean up here, go make dinner, and let this dry overnight. And we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. All right, so we are all done and ready to restring this thing up. So let's start at the, the headstock and all that. Everything is all cleaned up and polished, front and back. A whole bunch of... Uh, what do you call it? Um, like little spots of corrosion on it are cleaned off. And I oiled this, this fretboard seven times now. And you can still see that it's still soaking it up. Now, I don't want to keep doing that and, and get it to be all spongy from putting too much oil on it. So I figured we'll let it go. And uh, let it sit until it's next restringing. And you can bring it back up and I'll put more oil on it for him. And uh, get it back into shape fully, but so far it's a lot better than it than it was when it arrived. All the grime and 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 dirt and all that stuff and grease all cleaned off and polished. Even the pickups. <laughs> so that turned out really good. And then the fix for the the posts put the the wood wood uh, plate underneath it glued it all back in made the uh, tailpiece go right on no problem 
Got that all polished up. Got all the grime. I was really surprised that um, with all the the, the hand grease and, and, and chunkies and stuff that were on it, that it uh, did polish and come back. Same thing with the finish on the back. This thing's even still got the, the plastic on the um, control cavity cover. But you can see the the way they made this. You can see pretty much where every glue joint was. It looks like a three-piece three piece body, maybe even a four. But it looks like there's a line here, another line up here. If you catch it in the light, right? I don't know what that is. There were, it looks like the finish has been melted by something. And uh, I asked him about it, and he said, no, no, leave it go. It's character. It's part of the history, so that's all right. Neck cleaned up awesome. Again, a bunch of, bunch of divots and dings in there we left in for character. The, the tuners really came back to life. They were... They were just covered in, in, in like greasy, dusty dirt. You know how that gets. And uh, all the original stickers are still there. Did the polishing with the uh, tuners off. And uh, here we are. So we're going to restring it and then uh, stretch the strings and all that. And I'll be back with a play demo. We can all hear what this sounds like. Okay, here we are on this repair. I tried uh, wood gluing and filling it in there with that one little one little dab of uh, um, or that one piece of dowel in there and then filling that in, and that didn't get me nowhere. I'm not sure how good this is going to show up, but right now I'm working on filling in, doing the uh, super glue and uh, wood dust or sawdust. Uh, trick i got some the base down in the hole totally flat now and filled in and i've got part of the the side where it's pushed let's see get my hands in there working the back side of the hole this way where it would where the bottom can kick in and, and tilt over i've got that partially filled i think i'm going to do one more one more round of sawdust up that side and then see what that gives us 